you're looking at the fender well of our 2007 Pontiac Solstice. It looks like it's in pretty good shape, but around the edges it's a bit rough and it's not staying attached to the vehicle like it should. One of the things that we like to do to keep our cars looking new is to replace parts like this when we can. The fender well is something that you can get new from a GM parts supplier, pretty easy to find on the internet. So stay tuned, we're gonna show you how easy it is to do this. It took us a couple of hours. We're doing this video right after I've replaced the emblem on the front of the car. So this portion is already disassembled. There are four screw bolts. I've got them down here on the ground that you have to take out. There's one here, one here, one here, and one down here. So you're going to take those out. They're seven millimeter. Remove them. And now we're going to go around and I'll show you step by step how I take out each piece and how we ultimately install our new fender liner. Next one we're working on taking out is this one. And you notice how worn out the fender liner is? It's just pieces here. So the bolt isn't even holding anything. I've just got to get the little thing out. And I'm probably going to take my socket off and see if I can get a hold of it in all this mess and start it. Because that fender liner is so screwed up. And I'm going to work that out. Because this fender liner is so beat up here, I decided to just push on it, push it down, and I'm just going to unscrew my piece that way instead. But it isn't all that easy, even though the liner is beat up. Putting upwards pressure with my thumb on my left hand while I'm obviously screwing this out with my right hand. The ratchet actually would make this more difficult. And that's out. We're going to remove this one. It's not holding much. We're going to start with the ratchet because it is right now as tight as it could be. But we'll start with the ratchet and I'll switch to taking the ratchet off because it's much easier to do just by hand. To remove the splash guard on the car here. Now if you don't have a splash guard you're still going to have to remove the bolts but I've got the splash guard here, so we're going to take this one out, this one out, and there's also one underneath here holding the bottom of the splash guard. You'll never be able to see me do that. These are still seven millimeters, and we'll just start them in and take them out by hand. Okay, underneath you have one more bolt. This is a 10 millimeter. I'm going to have to do it by hand with a little wrench and take it off so I can take the splash guard off. Now it's out. And that's my little number 10 wrench. Here we have another 7 millimeter you have to take out. So if you had the splash guard, you wanted that out first. Now you got to take this out with your 7 millimeter. Now that we've pulled that 7 millimeter, you can see how loose the back portion of this is. You notice that I've rotated the wheel all the way to the driver's side. The reason we're going to do this is we need access to our next fastener, which is located up in the wheel well behind the wheel. This gives us the room, and we'll have Trish get a shot of that. Okay, the wrench combination here, I'm using an extension. It's a snap-on extension that allows me to have a swivel on the end and a 10 millimeter, because that's a 10 millimeter bolt to take out. I'm going to take it out. You can't watch me take it out. You've seen what it is, though. One 10 millimeter bolt out. Here's the other bolt now that we've rotated the wheels to the passenger side. It's going to be 10 millimeters also. I'm going to remove that. Again, you won't be able to watch it, but we'll take that one out. Front 10 millimeter bolt is now removed. This Christmas tree fastener is holding the wheel well in, so we're going to have to get that out. Now these are available and we'll give you the part number. There should be a doorman part that you can pick a new one up because these are really supposed to be a one-time use fastener. Nope, I found a way to get it out. That's a one-way fastener. You see how used it is? 
So we're going to get a new dorm in part. Did you see that? Yeah. Our inner fender liner is still connected by those two Christmas tree fasteners, which are holding your wiring harnesses. That's what's going on there. That's the only two things I believe we've got left that are actually physically holding it on. So we got to get those out. Grab onto your wiring harness, push hard and pull at the same time. Now I've got one out. Now you notice the other one is still in here. It has a wire tie that was attaching it. So we'll pop this out when we take this out of the car. Now down below here you have a brake cooling duct. That is actually that's holding this in a little bit right now. So I've got to push this off of the brake cooling duct. And that's going to take a little effort. You have to push and pull and work your way around until you can get this whole thing out. But that's what's, at, what's still holding it. Oops. Nope, we got another Christmas tree fastener I didn't see. There's one more Christmas tree fastener down in here. Not far from your brake duct. That's going to be popped out. And we're going to do that the same way we do the other one, hopefully, and push real hard on this fender liner and get it off of there. Push this one out. I got it. Good job. That also got it off the duct. Made the duct loose. Push that back in place. Now we got to work this old fender liner out of here. And I will have to put the duct on again. Just popped it a little bit. Okay. Now, putting the new one in is the one I'm going to be concerned about. This one I'm just concerned about getting out. All right, we're hung up yet on something. Yep, I'm going to have to have more room back there, so I'm going to turn the wheel straight. There, it's out. This is the clip we need to recover. And that holds part of the wiring harness in place. So I'm going to recover that clip. The way I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the plastic. Because we don't care about this part at all. So we'll just cut the plastic and get the clip back. Have a good size side cutters. We're just going to go along and snip our way through this. So we can recover our clip here. There we got our clip back. This one's quite usable still, so we're going to reuse the clip. Now we've got it out, we're going to show you the damage in total. We've got a broken spot right there. It's broken here. It's broken on that point. It's broken on this point. It's broken over on this point. This point. This point. So almost all the attachment points are broken on this one. It's shot. That's why we're replacing it. As you can see, we removed the labels here. We did that with a heat gun and gently peeled them off. Be careful, don't overheat it. You can melt your plastic, obviously. After that, we cleaned off the rest of the glue residue with some pre-cleaner, or in this case, prep all, which is a paint pre-cleaner. Wiped it down with a paper towel. So we got rid of all the labels in here. Now we're gonna weasel it in here, which is gonna be somewhat of a job, but, it is what is necessary. It is quite flexible. Makes you think that it'll never be rigid when you're doing this. And a large part of it in. And you will have to move it around a bunch, just like I'm having to have to do to get everything into place. So don't be surprised. It's going to do the same thing to you. And at first it's going to look like this is never going to fit, but it will. Down in here is your brake ventilation tube. You also have a hole in your new fender liner. And you've got to get the hole on like that, on your brake ventilation tube. Now after a bit, we're gonna put a piece of foam that we had in here before that I've got sitting aside and we'll show you that when we get to putting it in. 
but you got to get that tube fit like that before you start fastening any of the fasteners back in place. First one I'm going to put in is just start the one up here by your turn signal. And one of the keys right now is don't go fastening anything down yet because we got to get everybody kind of started and into place before we tighten things up too much. That will help us form our inner fender liner to the car properly. That one started. Now we're going to start working around gradually fitting our parts, making sure our fender liner gets in the right place. All right, there we have two holes in our front bumper. Each one of those has to have a clip. One of the clips is missing. The other clip is right here. I'll show it to you. And this is the clip. So you have to slide it back on there. This portion goes to the inside, not the outside, the inside. And I'm going to show you what we're going to use for the other clip. What we have here is a 170-piece U-clip assortment. Came from Harbor Freight. This actually works pretty good. Now we're going to choose, oops, don't want that one out there. We're going to choose one of these clips, and we're going to verify it works for our screw. Bolt by checking it, and that one works good. So this will be our replacement clip. I don't remember what I paid for this, but this is like just a few bucks or a couple bucks. You might as well buy that than go buy those at the auto parts store. Now I'm going to install the two clips in here, and I'm going to put the screw bolts all the way along here and just start them for now. And I'll do that off camera and we'll come back for the next operation. Notice that when you get this side assembled, we're looking at the front of the car, that the lip of the plastic goes right behind your turn signal. So you're going to have it up in behind your turn signal and you go down along your fender here, or actually your front bumper area, and you're inside. Now here I've got a little gap. I'm going to try to push Loosen this one and push this in, but that's how it goes together. Down here, this piece that's over your fender well, this is called, I believe, a brace, and it should assemble like I put it together. Now everything's dirty, but that is how it goes together. I haven't cleaned anything off. So this is the front section. Now we're going to show you how to put the rest of it together. All right, we're going to put our topmost bolt in here and start it. All we're going to do is start it. We don't want to tighten it, but we want to hold this up because the next thing I'm going to do is start the car and turn the wheel so I can get access to the back for the big bolts. Here's one of our 10 millimeter bolts. This bolts the fender, inner fender liner to the frame. Now I'm going to put that in the front hole. There's two of them, as you remember, when we showed you earlier. This is the foam rubber piece that goes around your brake ventilation tube and is anti-rattle and holds the tube kind of into this inner fender well. So now you want to put this in, and you kind of want to stuff it in all around it. That's kind of how it's misshapen over the years. So I'm going to stuff it in. Again, you can't watch it, but that's what you got to do. All right, there you see it's shoved back in there. So it's going to hold the tube in place and kind of seal things off. All right, here's our other 10 millimeter bolt that goes from the inner fender liner into the frame behind the mount for the shock, etc., for your steering. So we're going to put that in. Again, you can't watch me put in, but that's going to be put in completely tightened. Now we got to make sure all of our little clips are in place. This one doesn't look quite right. That's because he isn't. I got him in the right spot. There he's in the right spot. All right. Now right now, this is all loose until we start installing stuff here. All right, the first one we're going to put in is the back one here. This does not go in your mud garden. If you don't have a mud guard, it won't make any difference, of course. 
but we're going to put this one in part way first. And that's going to help us line everything up. And you see, I can push everything around right now. That's because we don't have this bottom bolt in here. Okay. All right, I'm going to push on it with my hand, line things up. Should be about, about like that. Now we're going to try to screw in our bolts as much as we can by hand, and we'll use the ratchet when we have to. Oops, dropped it. I think I'll put it on the ratchet. It's being a little tougher than I thought it would be. Put it back in place. Use our ratchet. Downside is that the it's not quite enough to ratchet and too much to do by hand right now. So I'll try to bring it around. And this whole time I'm keeping pressure on with my left hand, trying to hold this assembly in roughly the right position. We can obviously adjust it, but it's kind of nice to get it basically right at this point. There. Now, we got a large part of it in appropriate position. It's still going to move a little bit, but we'll be taking care of that shortly. We're going to fasten the top one down. Now you'll notice your inner fender liner does not come clear to the outside edge. It should not come quite to the outside edge. It should be about like this so that there's a little reveal in here. Now you see it's getting very sturdy. As sturdy as they ever get. We'll put our splash guard on and the thing is to line up everything. And then try to get them started before we finish fastening anything. And it's a very blind job now to do this, no matter how you look at it. The hole is, is there, but you can't see what you're going into easily. And I might have to get an awl to do this, but we'll see if I get it. So far, I'm not finding my hole. Let's try the bottom one and see if I get that one first. All right, off camera, I did have to loosen both bolts just a teeny bit. I pushed up here and retightened. I've got a better alignment on these other two holes than we had. This time, hopefully, I will find my holes easier. And if I don't, I will go break out an awl to line up one of them to the point that I can actually do it. I think I've got this one started. Nope, I thought I did. Here's, I finally got it. I'm going to look for a bottom one. Try and get it started. Okay, now those are both started. Now, the real issue you have is putting in the bottom bolt when you're dealing with a, a splash guard. Because this job to take this bolt and put it back in here is completely blind. So it can be real problematic. I will say when I did this and I redid this splash guard, at that time it took me a half hour to find the hole, ultimately. So I guess I'd call it almost sheer luck to find it and get everything lined up. Because there's no way to look at any of it. And you end up having to look up inside and keep working until you can figure out where your bolt is. And I'm not there by any means. So there's no way I can show it to you. I'm just telling you it's hard to do. I'll finish that off camera. All right, I've got my 10 millimeter wrench. I'm going to use that to fasten the bottom. The bottom's now started. I'm going to have to use my seven millimeter and go along and finish fastening these down all the way. And that's all you got to do. And it's going to be completed. So we're going to do that and we'll show you it all done. All right, we've got this all fastened up now, but there are three more things you need to do yet to fasten this. Come up top and we'll show you two of them. One is your Christmas tree fastener here. You just shove this back in. I've already done it. You also have another fastener for this particular line here of wiring. And it just uses, and I'm going to have to cut this one off, it uses a zip tie. 
and then the fastener is a Christmas tree that pushes in the hole. So you're gonna need a new zip tie. I'm gonna get that fastener, remind you what it looks like. This is the fastener for this point right here. There it is. And you need to zip tie it back in place and then shove it into the inner fender well. So that's that particular fastener. I'm gonna do that obviously off camera, but that's what you do. Now I'm gonna show you the third fastener point you have to remember. All right, you may remember I showed you this Christmas tree fastener before. This one's shot. I gotta to go to the auto parts store and pick one up. We'll give you the part number. Probably has a little subtitle so that you know what part number to use. And you remember that goes in the front of your inner fender well. And we'll show you again where it goes. We're gonna show you from the front side of the car here. Okay, I'm gonna light up the hole. You see the hole down here? There is, there's your hole. That's where the Christmas tree fastener is gonna come through from the other side, from the inner fender well side. We've installed that final fastener. You can see it poking through at the bottom of the screen. We're very pleased with the results. It looks nice and new. And this is something that you can do with a lot of tools that you already have on hand. We hope you found this video useful. Check out our 2007 Pontiac Solstice playlist. It has other useful tips and how to's when it comes to repairing these vehicles and keeping them on the road. Also, check out our 2009 Pontiac Solstice video playlist. Thanks for watching. Because these are really supposed to be a one time use fastener. So I can't get in there anyway. Nope, found a way to get it out. Did you see that? Oh, I did. We got to show them that. Um, I already did. Oh, you did? Yeah, it was actually filming when we did that. Well, that's perfect. Actually. All right, we're going to put our topmost bolt in here and start it. All we're going to do is start it. We don't want to tighten it, but we want to hold this up. Because next thing I'm going to do is start the car and turn the wheel so I can get access to the, access to the back for the big bolts. There's a procedure to this, you know. <laughs> All right, here's one of our two 10 millimeter bolts. It goes back in the frame fashion. Yeah. Sorry. Here's one of our 10 meter. I'll do it third time. Here's one of our 10. I have to start a fourth time. <laughs>